Well, good morning. This is Dr. Mike Erickson, pastor of Big Bear Four Square Church. Good to be here with you today. Uh, about 10.40 on Pacific time in the United States, 8.45 in East Africa, and 11.45 in Pakistan and India and some other places. So welcome today to the Word of the Lord. Um, today is the third message in the book of Nehemiah, a series we're called Rebuilding the Walls. And the title of the message is Four Months Later, Answers to Prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help me to preach the word of the Lord by faith, not based on what I see, but based on what I hear from you. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint your word today. And God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for those that are with me on Facebook, YouTube, and other places. And God, I ask that you would anoint your word with power today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Four months later and answers to prayer. Let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 2, and we're going to be in verse 1 through 6 today. Early the following spring, in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. This is four months later, in, still in the 20th year of Artaxerxes' reign. We find that the last, chapter one was started in November, December, of 46, 446, and this is the same year in April, four months later. I want to talk to you first about waiting on God, something that we are want to do and, and uh, feel the need to do for things in our life. Sometimes waiting on God is imposed on us and we have no choice but to wait on him because we don't know what else to do. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, when Nehemiah got the news from how things were happening in Jerusalem and the walls, he says, When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned. In fact, for four months, fasting and prayed to the God of heaven with no direction, with not knowing what to do, having no plan, yet burdened by the things that he heard and about the things that come to him. So he received this burden and now he finds himself in four months of prayer with no end. He doesn't, doesn't see how anything can end here, but he's waiting on God, not because he's chosen to wait on God, but because he has no choice but to wait on God. Yeah. Psalm 5, verse 3, and I love the morning hour. It says, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice in the morning. Reading, praying, worship, talking to the Lord. I lay my request before you and wait in expectation for the answers to the prayer. That's something we do every day. We wait in expectation for the things that we ask because we know that it'll answer, yet we are waiting in anticipation because we know that that's the process. 
Sometimes we don't know that it's the process. Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. Psalm says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I put my hope. We don't put on our, our hope in our emotions, our plans, our outside. We turn to his word to find hope. And hope is the foundation of faith. And faith is the foundation of love. And love is the foundation of all the Christian virtues. So it says, we wait in hope for the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. You know, watchmen, whether it be a guard in Kenya or Tanzania, or whether it be watchmen on the wall, their duty was to watch all night with intense alertness and, and uh, looking for things that might attack the city. They were relieved when their shift was over, when, when the morning came. But during the process, they had to be diligent in their searching and being alert. Isaiah 30 verse 18 tells us, Yet the Lord brings longs, he longs to be gracious to his people to you. He rises to show you compassion, for the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. It's part of the process. We all have to wait on the Lord. One of the great verses to give us encouragement to wait on the Lord is found in Isaiah Chapter 40, <coughs> verse 28. Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. Thank God for that. Yes. You cannot exhaust omnipotence. And his understanding no one can fathom. You cannot exhaust his omniscience. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths get tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, those who wait in the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Great encouragement to us about who God is and our ability to wait for him because he, he desires to come through for us in a big way. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait patiently for it. And in those chapters, it talks about if we already have it, we would have no reason to hope for it and to be patient about that. But if we don't have it, we're not seeing it, we need to wait patiently for God to come through. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. They got beat, thrown into prison, had a long day in trial, long day in miracles and preaching and things and things happening. And they find themselves in 
prison. It doesn't say what time, but it does say this. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praising while they were waiting on him, singing hymns to God, and all the prisoners were listening, and worshiping the Lord, praising him and seeking him in a hard place. Physically, they had been beaten. They were in a hard place. They didn't know what to do. They were shackled. For all they knew that this was the end, they were praising God for whatever was happening. But suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. Suddenly, God shows up, and the prison was shaken to the foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. While we're waiting, we might not understand what will happen, but God will, by his power, something will happen. That would change our lives. In Nehemiah's case, his delayed answers to prayer, he's not he doesn't he's not praying for anything specific. He's just praying, fasting, seeking God because of the news that he got. He's not saying, Lord send me. He's not saying uh, I, I have a plan, Lord, I'm going to do this. He doesn't know what to do. He's seeking God. And I'm sure he is thinking that there's delayed answers to prayer like all of us think. Uh, all of us have that. We have delayed answers to prayer. Part of that process Proverbs 13, 12 tells us that in the process, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I mean, it's like, well, what is happening, Lord? I don't see it. what's happening. <clears throat> hope deferred. But when the dream, a dream fulfilled is a tree of life, when God answers prayer, God does something that only God can do. It's a tree of life. I want to point to Daniel chapter 10 as a story of Daniel, and you're very familiar with this. When Daniel, for three weeks, seeks God, prays God, because of a vision that he has, and finds himself in a place of delayed answers to prayer. Daniel 10, verse 2, when this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been mourning for three whole weeks, 21 days. At that time, <coughs> excuse me, at that time I had eaten no rich food. No meat or wine crossed my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. We call that a Danielic fast, uh, vegetables that were even not pleasant with him, water, and didn't put on lotions. I mean, he was in a state much like Nehemiah was in the same state. Daniel was in the state for 21 days. Verse 8 and 9 says, So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale. And I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak. And I heard the sound of his voice sound of the angel, hearing his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face on the ground. 
no strength, pale, very weak, hears an angel's voice and he faints. Then the angel said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the day you began to pray for your understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. When we pray immediately, our prayers are heard in heaven. Daniel is assured by the angel that from the first day, not the 21st day, but on the first day that you pr prayed and sought the Lord, your voice was heard in heaven. And, I, and the angels come to explain to Daniel why there is delay. But he says, I've come in answer to your prayer. Verse 13, but for 21 days, spiritual warfare, the spirit of the prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. War in heaven. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Fighting for 21 days in the heavenly spiritual warfare, Michael the archangel comes and rescues this angel while he's defeating the prince of Persia. For 21 days this is happening. And all this time Daniel is praying, waiting on God. You know, when we're seeking God and waiting on him, we don't know what's happening in the heavenlies. But God is putting things into place. He's arranging things. There's spiritual warfare happening. There's things happening. And God's working on it in a dimension that we're not seeing. But we have to hope, pray, and believe that when we're in the process, God is still bringing the answer. Now, in ne for Nehemiah, the process of answered prayer started with the king speaking to Nehemiah. It didn't start with Nehemiah speaking to the king. It started when, with the king speaking to him. I want to remind Brian, you that King Artaxerxes, his name means kingdom of righteousness. For our illustration, he's a type of the Lord, a type of Christ, and our personal application of the book of Nehemiah. So it's like the king, a type of the Lord, speaks to Nehemiah first. In verse 2. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be ter deeply troubled. Nehemiah, in his position, then felt terrified that this was being confronted. But I replied, long live the king, how can I not be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, the king asked, well then, Nehemiah, how can I help you? You know what Nehemiah does next? It says, with a prayer to God of heaven, spontaneous prayer, emergency prayer, not in, nothing that he vocalized, but in his mind and his spirit, he's praying an emergency prayer to God before he speaks. I will remind all of us that there are times we need to pray before we speak. When somebody confronts us or talks to us or something's happening, we need to take that moment and have a spontaneous emergency prayer and pray before we speak. 
We don't know what Nehemiah was saying to the Lord in that moment. It's like, God, help me. Give me the words. Whatever Nehemiah was sharing with the Lord. So there are times also that we need to pray before we speak. Amen? Amen. It also helps to think before we speak as well. Amen. <laughs> and then the scripture, I believe that Nehemiah was terrified in this moment. And he really needed courage to ask the king. He needed the courage to ask Artaxerxes the kingdom of righteousness. It says in verse 5 and 6, I replied, If it please the king, and you are pleased... <laughs> Excuse me. Are pleased with me, your servant. Send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. That's a big, that's a big, I mean, the king says, what would you like me to do? I'd like to quit my job as governor and you send me to be the governor of Judea for a number of years, okay? <laughs> We're talking 12, 14 years. Hope that's all right. The king with the queen sitting and, and beside him asked, how long, he didn't say, Nehemiah, that's out of the question. What the king did was open the door to Nehemiah and said, how long will you be gone? When you, will you return? In other words, yes, how long will you be gone? And when you, will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king answered my request. It's the typology here is that the king granted Nehemiah's request that it was at the foundation of his burden that he'd been crying out to the Lord for four months, not knowing that this conversation with the king was coming. He had the courage to ask. Amen. We need the courage to ask as well. We ask in Hebrews chapter 4, four verse 14 and 15. Since then we have a great high priest who has got, entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. Hold firmly to what we believe. Like Paul says, I firmly believe what I believed in. We have to have faith in what God has spoken to us is God's will, God's word, and we believe that is absolutely what, what we have. This high priest of ours understands our weakness, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, our lack of understanding. For we face all the same testings we do, yet without sin. So because we have such a king, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. And there at the throne that we have been invited to, we will receive his mercy not a judgment, we will receive, find grace to help us when we need it the most. Just like Nehemiah. And I want to remind you of the story of Nehemiah. He's 
suffered with his burden for four months, not knowing what to do. The king spoke to him. He prayed to the God of heaven God, and asked the king. The king opened the door and was gracious. And God begins the story of restoration right here at the end of verse 6 where it says, And the king answered his request. God answers prayer. Amen. God says yes a lot of times. God says no a lot of times. And we thank God for that because we want his will and his will only. Amen. We want the things that God has put into our... <coughs> Excuse me, that is led in our lives, and we depend on those no's as much as we depend on his yes. A lot of times it's not yes or no, but it's in a, a pay, plan, part where we're waiting on God, just like Nehemiah did for four months, it delayed. Delayed for what reasons, we don't know, like in Daniel chapter 10, but delayed nevertheless. But I want to remind us that God's timing is perfect. God's will is perfect. I'm spontaneously reminded of Gen in Genesis 37 through 50, where the story of Joseph where Joseph was 13 years part of his house, then he graduates to prison, and 13 years, and then God opens up a door, and within 24 hours, he's the second in line in the kingdom of Egypt. Who might be in prison, Part of his house, we might not know what we're doing, but we're serving God where we're at. And then suddenly, we're the second command in Egypt. God's turned our life around. That is God at his best in our lives. Amen. So I want to encourage you with Mark chapter 11. Verse 22 through 24, Jesus said to his disciples concerning the cursed fig tree, have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, whatever mountain you're facing, whatever obstacle that is, whatever issue that is, health, finances, church, life, family, friends, whatever the mountain. May you be lifted up, mountain problem, and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen. And have no doubt in your heart that it will happen. I tell you, you can pray for anything, face anything, any mountain, any fig tree, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. If it's the will of God, God wants you to fulfill his will in your life. In his timing, in his space, God wants you to continue hope, faith, and love, and persevere until that time where that mountain is thrown into the sea. Heavenly Father, help us to wait on you with a heart full of hope and faith, with a heart to believe you and not give up 
Lord, through the heart to pray and to see things in the spirit, no matter what we see in the natural. And God, I pray that you would move us all to prayer. We thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen.